Australia abstaining is particularly problematic because what uh, there will not be even stepping stones towards peace with justice unless there is pressure on Israel. And so the the line of the Australian government, oh, we support a so-called two-state solution in theory and we support peace in theory, um, but we're only prepared to support a resolution like the one that was put to the UN when there is a comprehensive peace treaty uh, or agreement detailing, you know, a path to a so-called two-state solution uh, is, is just rubbish. Uh, Israel is not going to make concede anything. It's not, not going to make any concessions without pressure. Uh, and the Australian government position was all about not putting pressure on Israel um, and in practice letting Israel continue to do what it's doing. And that is the essential position of the Australian government. It's crocodile tears and hand wringing uh, on, on, you know, out one side of its face, um, but in practice continuing to give fundamental strategic support to Israel. And I think probably, you know, the most demonstrative example of that was continuing uh, with the $917 million deal with the Elbert Systems uh, and pumping nearly a billion dollars of Australian taxpayers' money into the Israeli industrial military complex. Only weeks after the ICJ has told Israel um, uh, that there's a plausible case of genocide and it, and it and every other state in the world has an obligation to stop that from happening. So, you know, I think this is part, the fact that Australia's taken this position is is also partly the fruit fruits of AUKUS as well. Because um, there was actually, it was, it was heartening that there are a number of Western countries that actually voted for, um, not just Ireland, who you'd expect, but from memory, uh, Norway and Finland, Belgium, France, Spain, Portugal, Iceland, uh, so it wasn't just the global South that voted in favour of it. There was quite a number, um, a number of countries, and Japan as well, um, which is you know quite close to Australia and the United States. So quite a number of, you know, the the public pressure um, that this is this horrendous thing has to stop is is starting to tell, and 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 Israel is more isolated than ever before. Um, so it's very unfortunate that um, the so-called, what I would call the Anglo-imperialist countries or the sort of five eyes countries like Canada, Britain, Australia, not New Zealand, but Canada, Britain and Australia abstained um, while, of course, the United States voted against. So signalling that they're still not prepared to put that pressure on the US or, or, the, or, or Israel itself. So there's no question that the Australian government has failed. You know, not that this by itself would be a decisive thing, but nonetheless, the Australian government has has failed the Palestinian people. It's failed international law and it's failed peace and justice in the world at, at this important turning point. 